Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? Today I'd like to talk to you about two-weapon fighting, or dual wielding if you prefer. Now I kind of talked about that a little bit in the big huge weapons installment I did, but I really didn't spend that much time with it. And I figured this really deserves a second look and you know a closer look and, and in more detail because this is something that's kind of plagued D&D over the years and been kind of problematic because it's really difficult to implement something mathematically that's going to be fair in both ways make it not too overpowered not too underpowered now two weapon fighting makes sense people have been attacking each other with two weapons ever since they looked down and noticed they had two hands and looked back up and realized they didn't like each other very much in terms of how realistic it is, experts vary on their opinions. I don't care how realistic it is. All I want to be able to do is use a system, you know, mechanical system in my game that makes sense to me and that is, you know, not too powerful and not too, you know, underpowered. That's all I care about. Now, the obvious problem with two-weapon fighting is you get a free attack. You can potentially do more damage and hit people more often. Now, there's some penalties involved. Now, clerics and fighters, they can use shields. And when you're using two weapons, you can't use your shield, so your armor class suffers. Thieves and magic users don't have this problem. However, they've, there's had some penalties in terms of, like, your to-hit roll or attack roll, and various games do it a little bit differently. But there's penalties involved whenever you're two-weapon fighting. At the same time, you want there to be a reason and some benefit to use two weapons. You don't want to make the game just like to be like, oh no, you can't do that, it's not going to work. You want the game to be fun. And so, you know, I like the idea that there should be some kind of benefit, not a super benefit, but some reason to do that. Otherwise, you might as well just keep your long sword and shield on and call it a day. And that's no fun. You know, the game should have some, some variety in it. Now, I come from an older D&D standpoint, so that's where I'm coming from, and that's what I'm, you know, looking for something that's going to work in my game. I don't care where I get the idea from. I'm not too proud to look at other games and look, look at that, you know, just for this mechanic and other mechanics. I really don't care, but, you know, I'm more interested in the net result. Now, I whipped up a pretty big Microsoft Access SQL database and did a rather exhaustive mathematical comparison of all these various systems and came up with some pretty interesting conclusions which I'll, which I'll share later. I'm not going to drown you in numbers. I'm going to give you some of the, the bottom line, so to speak. If you're really interested in this sort of stuff and have MS Access at home, you know, email me. I'll email you a copy of the database. It'll be great. You can knock yourself out if you want to. The games I looked at primarily were first edition and second edition AD&D, so AD&D, and also the D20 Pathfinder game. And I also looked at a bunch of really cool ideas that were posted on a website called dragonsfoot.org. And that's a website, if you don't know, devoted to first edition D&D, but also to all the older D&D games, you know, pre-3E. So if you like those games, it's a really great, great website to go check out. Um, I was also able to come up with, with an evaluated system of my own, not that I had one before, but just going over this mathematically, I wondered, well, what about this, what about that, what if I shoehorn these ideas together, and so it actually looks pretty decent, but I'm not going to go over that in this video, I'm going to, you know, you know uh, record a second video and, and uh, have you look at it then, you know, rather than make this video just way too long. The first thing I do is go over like how AD&D and Pathfinder handle two weapon fighting, just in case anybody does you know, anybody doesn't know. And so we're all on the same page. Now in AD&D, the penalty for using a weapon in your offhand is negative two to your attack roll or two to hit roll. Now it doesn't matter what size this weapon is, as long as you're using just one weapon. But there's a negative two penalty. Second edition allowed you to purchase uh, ambidexterity with one weapon's proficiency slot. So if you had that, then there was no penalty for doing that. Now, if you use two weapons at once, this involves several things. First off, the uh, secondary weapon had to be a light weapon like a dagger or a hand axe, and that was it. Uh, next, first edition was kind of fuzzy on whether this gave you double your attacks or just one extra attack per round. Second edition made it clear that no, this is one extra attack per round. So if you're a high level fighter with two attacks per round and you're two weapon fighting, you get one extra attack per round, and that's with the offhand weapon. You don't get four. Um, in first edition, everybody could use two weapon fighting, but in second edition, this was limited just to fighters and thieves. The penalty for two weapon fighting was negative two to the primary weapons to hit roll and negative four to the secondaries. So we call this like negative two, negative four. If you were ambidextrous, this went down to negative two, negative two. Now you could actually use your dexterity modifier. One of the modifiers for the dexterity in, in AD&D could be applied to those penalties. So if you had a high dexterity and these modifiers were positive, you could actually negate those penalties. You can get a positive to hit, but you can negate them. So if you had an 18 dexterity with a plus 3 modifier, then instead of negative 2, negative 4, it was now 0, negative 1, which wasn't too, so bad. Second edition also introduced the idea of the two-weapon fighting style and the idea that you could buy specialization in that style with a proficiency slot. 
and this did uh, three things for you. First, it reduced that negative 2, negative 4 penalty to 0, negative 2. If you're ambidextrous, it reduced it to 0, 0. Uh, second thing is you could use that offhand weapon as a shield if you want to. You for forewent any attack that round with that weapon, but you could you know use it as a shield and get one better to your armor class. And last, it allowed you to use um, two normal size one-handed weapons. So you could use two long swords if you wanted to, and not get any other extra penalties for doing that. Now Pathfinder handled things a little bit differently. The penalty for an offhand weapon use is negative four. As far as I know, there's no ambidextrous feat in uh, D20 or Pathfinder. I could be wrong. It's kind of surprising there isn't. Maybe there is. Um, whether using a single weapon offhand or in two-weapon fighting, um, that offhand weapon only gets one half the strength bonus in terms of the to hit and damage rolls. Anyone's allowed to fight with two weapons. And there aren't any restrictions on what kind of one-handed weapons you can use, but there's different penalties depending on whether or not the offhand weapon is a light weapon or not a light weapon. Uh, now fighting with two weapons also, just like uh, second edition, it grants you just one extra attack uh, with that offhand weapon per round, no matter how many attacks you get with your primary weapon. The penalties for two weapon fighting in Pathfinder are negative six, negative ten. And if the offhand weapon is light, then they're only negative four, negative eight. If you had a dexterity of fifteen, you could take the two weapon fighting feat which reduced those penalties to negative four, negative four, and if the offhand weapon was light, it was negative two, negative two. Also, if you had a dexterity of 15, and had already taken the two weapon fighting feat, you could take the two weapon defense feat, which would give you one better to your armor class, and two better to your armor class if you were fighting defensively. Likewise, if you still had that dexterity of 15, and had already taken the two weapon fighting feat, you could take the double slice feat, which allowed you to use your full strength modifier on that offhand weapon. Now, if you had an attack bonus of plus 6, which would be a Thacko of 14, and a dexterity of 17, and had already taken the two-weapon fighting feat, then you could take the improved two-weapon fighting feat, which allowed you to make a second attack with that offhand weapon per round at a negative 5 penalty to hit. And then, if you had an attack bonus of plus 11, which would be a Thacko of 9, a dexterity of 19, and had already taken the improved two-weapon fighting feat, you could take the greater two-weapon fighting feat, which allowed you to make a third attack per round with the offhand weapon at a negative 10 penalty. And last but not least, my favorite, if you had an attack bonus of plus 11, or a thack of 9, a dex of 17, and had already taken the improved two-weapon fighting feat, you could take the two-weapon rend feat, which allowed you to do an additional 1d10 uh, points of damage plus one and one half times your strength modifier if you hit an opponent with both your weapons during a round. So that was pretty evil. Now I'm not a big feats guy, but I like the idea of, of something if you specialize in something maybe it'll get better and better over time. So those are some interesting ideas to kind of think about. Now the actual mathematical analysis I did was this. I, I did some things I've done before. I looked at the 20 natural rolls that you can make on a d20, each of which would allow you to hit a given armor class or worse. And so each one of those rolls represents the roll you'd need to, you know, to make to hit a given armor class if you were fighting with a single weapon. This is, you know, you know, um, regardless of what your thack was, there's still just 20 natural rolls. Now I compared the frequency that you would hit with two weapons at least one time at the various penalty levels versus how often you'd hit with that single weapon with no penalty for each roll needed for that single weapon. And I also just averaged um, out uh, you know, how often you hit with the two weapons um, you know, together versus, uh, versus just the one weapon, which is lesser uh, because you had to hit, actually hit with both of them. I figured out like at what point using two weapons hits more often than one weapon despite their penalties. So that what armor classes or you know not armor class but what natural role would that happen? And likewise, I figured out the average damage per round two weapons would do versus one weapon. And I figured out like you know when that when that would happen and what the averages of all that stuff was. Now for purposes of comparison, I figured that the primary weapon you're going to use like if you're just fighting just single handed is going to be a D8 weapon. So it's going to be a long sword. And with determining two weapon damage, I figured we'll go with a classic long sword and dagger. So it's a D8 weapon and a D4 weapon in your secondary hand. When a person could use two normal sized weapons, I used two D8 long swords as uh, the damage figure. Now the first thing that was really obvious is that unless the penalties are very light or non-existent, you hit more frequently and do more damage with a single weapon when you need a high number to hit your opponent. You do better than you do with two weapon fighting. Eventually, as the number you need to hit, you know, the natural roll you need to uh, roll to hit your opponent gets lower and lower, two weapon fighting takes over and becomes better, does more damage per round, and you hit them more frequently. 
But you know, I'll continue with the rest of the analysis. But the armor class of your target is very important. If they're difficult to hit normally, in general, you do better with a single weapon. If they're easy to hit, two weapons is often the better strategy. Now, in the interest of time, I'm going to stop that video right there and then start up again with the actual mathematical analysis in some more detail. You know, finish that and then talk about some other stuff uh, in terms of uh, you know alternate ideas and then uh, the the system that I kind of came up with and I'm, I'm tweaking a little bit. So hopefully you'll enjoy that.